guys, this is Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. That's my blog. Um, this weekend I uh, made a video with Michael who came down from um, Elgin, Texas, right outside of Austin. And um, as we were going through and, and just making the video and whatnot, well, I had taken this video camera, my good one, my little Sony Handycam, I took it with me down to the coast and it really traveled um, kind of unprotected. And so I thought, well, I know I have an um, embroidery in the hoop zipper bag pattern that I could make a bag for it and that way it would be protected when it travels because it didn't really come with a travel bag. And uh, you know, they got to get you for every nickel, want you to buy new, right? And, um, hello Harley. And, uh, so I thought, well, I'll just, I'll just, um, make the travel bag and I'll show you guys how I do it in the hoop. That was my first thought of what this video would be. Hold on, we have a drinking dog. Just a minute. So, this morning I got an email from Urban Threads. And Urban Threads is a uh, kind of a hipster type of uh, embroidery. They sell embroidery files. And um, they had some really cute little gnomes, you know, like a little travel gnome. But they had these little gnomes and they were taking selfies of themselves with, um, with their cell phones. And I thought, well, that would be a real cute little design to put on the outside of that zipper pouch that I could have, you know, because my YouTube channel is like one big selfie, right? <laughs> so I thought, okay, I'll just come home and do that and, and you know, I'll, I'll show how I do that. I'm still going to do that, but the preparation to do that, there's a lot that goes into getting ready to make a project that's in the hoop that, that is an embroidery project at all. And a lot of that is lost or it's not taught. And so this video is going to be all about my process. Of, and, and there's a lot of different ways to do these things, you guys. If you learned a different way from a, from a class or somebody else on YouTube has a way that explains it better that you're comfortable with, that's great. Just do, with, do what works for you. But there's a lot that goes into getting ready to um, make uh, an embroidery file. So a design on something. You know, you have to purchase it. Most of them come online. Um, there are still companies that sell DVDs, you know, with t I have a whole bunch of DVDs with embroidery designs on them. Um, but there's so much more that's out there that's online. And a lot of us are really intimidated about fiddling around with that whole online thing. We'd rather take the DVD, put it in the laptop, transfer over to a USB stick, and then take that USB stick right over to the machine and import it. Um, hold on a second. I got a dog barking at something. So, um, that's limiting. It, it really can be limiting if you're just limited to what's on the DVDs that you have. You know, a lot of you have these machines that you have spent thousands of dollars on. I mean, the cost of these machines, my goodness, <laughs> it's striking how much they charge for these things. And um, so um, a lot of you are my new subscribers and you don't know, if unless you've went, uh, gone back and watched my videos, I, um, as a, I'm a, by day, I'm a cybersecurity analyst for the U.S. Air Force. Um, I'm a federal civilian. I'm a retired military, 20 years retired. And um, so I'm real comfortable with computers. And I've done a lot of instruction on how to teach computers. I've done a lot of um, writing uh, computer technical manuals. That was one of my jobs one time during, you know, my, my time in the Air Force. And um, so I wanted to kind of baby step you one step at a time how I go through my entire process to download files, um, how to store them in your folder libraries on your computers, 
and uh, whether you've got a laptop or you have a tablet or whatever and um, or maybe you have a big desktop how to store those files and how to extract files from zip and um, you know just kind of a basic you really need to know and understand how that whole process works in order to um, not have to call a grandchild <laughs> to come help you do this <laughs> so um, when it comes to um, storing files I want you guys to think about remember remember back in the day you would go to the library and they had a card catalog remember the card catalog it was a ginormous uh, thing of little bitty drawers and it was full of little cards and they were those cards you could get by title or by subject and um, I think there was another two that's shameful I went to librarian school I forgot <laughs> a long time ago you guys um, so I file my embroidery files and I have thousands of them you guys I file them by subject okay so as you download files as you purchase things online or even if you have them in DVDs and you want to move them from the DVD onto your computer it, you can copy them over you're going to want to do that in a way that you can find it again okay so think of it like a cookbook all right you got your main course meals you got your appetizers you got your desserts you got your beverages kind of do the same thing okay so like my top level file let's say is holidays all right I have another top level file for babies I have another top level file for animals all right so let's say for holidays then inside of holidays okay I have um, Christmas I have Thanksgiving I have Halloween what that does is it creates a card catalog file structure of how you need to import your designs from whether you download them or you get them from I keep looking over there because that's where my DVDs are with all my designs on them um, or, or maybe you pull them off of a DVD or maybe you got a USB stick you went to a seminar and they gave you a USB stick and so you know maybe you don't want maybe you want to reuse that USB stick for something else because it's kind of handy move all the files off of it put them into your to your computer and you know delete them uh, off the USB stick um, so that that's really important you guys just kind of need to think like that when you're downloading files also uh, when you are downloading um, design files or you're moving them from whatever media whether it's a USB stick or it's a DVD that you got um, a lot of times they're named some crazy thing like I don't know that it'll have a couple of letters and it'll have a number that the company uses to identify the file but if you were to see that on your screen you don't know what that is um, so do not hesitate to take that extra step to rename your design files so that you know what they are just and I'll show you guys how to do that here in a minute but it's really important to to do all of this and take that extra time because not only a week from now six months from now tomorrow you won't remember what's what and you're gonna be like where did I put that what's it called and you go to search for it and you can't find it so take the extra time take the extra step to go ahead and do those things okay so let me take you through um, what I do in order to keep myself straight so this is my computer here and I got an email today from Urban Threads and that's the one I was telling you guys about I'm gonna bring it up right here and let me move the camera so you can see what I'm doing okay so here's the email I got from Urban Threads there you know they're just they have the cutest little stuff they have a lot of fun things and they showed you get a free gift with a $12 order and they show these cute little gnomes on um, this zipper pouch and maybe you want to put your phone in it they get, that's what gave me the idea well let me make a zipper pouch to keep uh, my little camera in so when you purchase 
from let's say you go through and you you know you click the shop now and, and you're off and running right <clears throat> so this is um, my order page from Urban Threads when I get back to Urban Threads and I sign in there's my orders you you will get an email once you buy something you'll get an email from the company that says here's your order confirmation thank you for shopping right and then you click on their link and you can go to your downloads so I logged in back logged back into urban threads and you um, in this particular company I click my orders and there's my little gnomes okay now they have you ha when you go to purchase you need to know what kind of file type you need if you have a brother or a baby lock machine it's going to be PES you can download this in any um, any style that you any format that you want you're going to need to read your manual so that it tell like if you have a Janome you're going to use a Jeff file okay and each each different machine type uses a different file extension so that will tell you in your manual which one you need alright so I bought the 7.8 inch width by 5.08 height because I was going to make a 6 by 10 little pouch for my camera now it says download I can download it unzipped or zipped email they'll email me the files unzipped or zipped and then you have a thread list okay <clears throat> and these are all zero pricing because they were freebies because I bought twelve dollars worth of stuff this morning I bought a little purse and something else anyway so what's the what is the difference with zipped zipped and unzipped zipped is a format that allows a large amount of data it the data is compressed really really small into a file size that can transfer very quickly over the internet so if you click unzipped it's going to take forever and a day because this is a large file okay it's going to take a lot and so I like to download zipped files so when you click when I click zipped oh look it wants me to log in again because it's been a while they logged me out let me go back to my orders and this was my gift with purchase so let me go to zipped and then in a Windows machine you will have this come up what do you want to do with this file ut20755.pes.zip you can open it or you can save it or you can cancel you want to go to save and click that little arrow and go save as if you just click save it'll drop into your downloads folder that folder can get very very full very very fast so it wants to know where do I want to save it so I went into my embroidery file first okay and I didn't know really where to put these guys and so I created a new folder called gnomes well how do you do that right here there's new folder okay so matter of fact I'm gonna get rid of this real quick let me delete so I can show you this there gnomes is gone okay so I want to file these little guys in a gnomes folder so I'm gonna click new folder and it says well, what do you want to call it I want to call it gnomes okay now on gnomes open it up and see what's the file name UT which is urban threads 20755.pes if I don't rename this I'm never gonna find it again really I won't know what it is well I will know what it is but there's another reason for that because I have an extra piece of software but so but UT tells me it's urban threads and you will see that in a lot of your designs if you buy something like from designs by Juju you'll see in the file name it'll have D dbjj and it'll have a number of whatever it is um, so what I'm gonna do right here is right before it you can just click in the file name right before it and you can type I'm gonna type gnome selfies now you'll notice I don't make a space in here okay 
I don't make a space because it's an old habit from back in computer coding days. They don't like spaces. They prefer, that's a lot of times why you'll see a percent sign where there ought to be a space. Um, computer language likes an entire string. You can do whatever you want. You can, you can space it if you want. So now I know this is GNOME Selfies. I put an underscore. UT, it's from Thurban, Urban Threads, and that's the file name, .pes. So now I'm going to click Save. Now, when it says, okay, it finished downloading, now what am I going to do? You can click Open, but I'm going to open Folder. Because inside the folder is a zip file that I also have to open. If I click Open, it's not going to work right, okay? If I click Open Folder, you can tell there is, let me see if I can make this bigger for you to see. No, I can't. Let me get in there. Let me see if I can make this closer. I'm going to lift the camera up a little bit. There. It looks like there's a little zipper on the folder. That tells you there's a whole bunch of files in there, okay? And it says compressed and zipped. So on here, you highlight it and you right click your mouse. And in this menu, you've got open, open in new window, and extract all. If you only do open, you won't be able to use the files that are in there. They won't work. It's because they don't have all of their pieces put back together. Hey, remember, um, remember in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory where, where that little kid, Mike TV, and he kind of went across the, he went across the whole top of the room and tiny millions of little particles, okay? When they all got put back together, he turned into a little bitty guy. This is the same idea with zip files, okay? you got a whole lot of data that's compressed. So you want to extract all, and that's where you want to go. So now it's saying I want you want to select a destination and extract the files, okay? Just You can browse if you want, but just click extract. That's all you need to do. And there it is, all right? So now here is the file inside of GNOMES and there's the GNOME selfies folder that it extracted and I double click on that and there's my little GNOMES. Let me go to view and extra large icons. See this? Now the reason I can see this is because I have a piece of software on here from Designs and Machine Embroidery that allows me to know Dime makes one. But this is from, um, this is part of the Embrilliance suite. I actually have both, I think. Anyway, so see how the thread, the, the name is UT20755. I'm going to rename it. Right click and scroll down and hit rename. And I'm going to call it Gnome Selfies. And then I'm going to call it 5 by seven dash okay now I know what size it is too okay that's perfect so now I'm going to scroll down here hold on a minute um, I have my USB drive in here already it's this let me back out so you can see what I'm doing Whoop! wrong direction my bad So here's my USB drive right here. I'm going to take this and I'm going to click it and I'm going to drag it down to my USB right there. Copy. See it says copy to USB drive F. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is when you're in your folder thing here, uh, put your cursor over the USB drive, right click and open in a new window. Okay, there it is right there. I dragged it over to it. See that? Here I was playing with this one. Let me get rid of that. And here's the one I just drug over. Let me get rid of that one. Do I want to delete? Yes. Okay, there's my zipper bag file for the uh, 6x10. So let me, now I've got multiple windows open. Okay, so here's the one that's on my laptop and here's my USB. Just grab a hold of it with your mouse and drag it on here drag and drop and there it is so it copies it over right away so it's already on the stick 
Pretty cool, huh? Okay, really simple to do. It seems a little intimidating to those of you that are not familiar with computers and you say, oh, I'm not computer literate and I don't know a thing and I need help from my son or my grandchildren. You can do this, okay? It's really simple and if you need to open up my video while you're playing with your computer and stop it every couple of seconds to watch and see what the next step is or if you want to write it down, go ahead and do that, okay? That'll make it a lot easier for you. All right, so now I have a purchased file on my USB stick and I'm ready to take that to the embroidery machine but I'm not done one of the another thing you need to do let me close that close that well I shouldn't have done that whatever okay so now this is in brilliance okay in brilliance has a freebie version I will link to it down here um, in the description box below and this is great you do not need to pay for in brilliance in order to be able to do this next step that I'm going to tell you guys about okay so if you download in brilliance and then it'll say when you go to use it it'll want you to put in a, uh, um, a, a code a product code just click cancel and it'll open up the freebie version for you however I do want to tell you guys this program is amazing and you're, you will love it. And I use mine all the time, okay? So what I need to do now is I need to be able to print out the, uh, the picture of the gnomes and the thread list so I know what I'm doing, okay? I need my directions. So um, let me open up my little gnomes here. And I'm going to, with Brilliance, I'm going to move my window a little bit down I'm gonna grab my gnome and I'm just gonna pull it up here into the embrilliance window and see how it does a little double square with a plus and let go there's my gnomes and I can click here to center but it automatically centered um, them when you get into embrilliance you want to go to edit preferences and you need to choose a hoop and you choose your file format right here and you choose your hoop and it's got all different kinds of hoops on here and I chose my quattro 9 by 10 because I'm making a 6 by 10 pouch okay so I'm gonna click apply and click OK and that will change the size of your hoop that you have now the default on this came up as brother embroidery this is the for the properties this is where the threads are this came up as brother embroidery well I'm using Madeira poly neon that's what I have so I'm going to click on um, I think one color right and it says thread what do you want to do so where it says brother embroidery I'm going to go to uh, Madeira poly Madeira poly and Madeira poly neon are the same oh, that's marathon there's Madeira Madeira poly and Madeira rayon are not the same they don't have the same thread numbers they don't mean the same thing so you go to Madeira poly and what it has done now is it has identified all of the thread colors that I need in order to be able to do there's like 15 thread colors in this thing you oops did I do that right? I did. Dear Polly. Okay. Oops. When you make a mistake like that, I'm going to leave this part of the video in so you guys can see what I did. It chose to put it all in one color. When I make a mistake like that, you go Control Z and that's undo. That's the handiest thing in the whole world. Okay? So, anyway. I had said one color you need to click thread and it comes up Madeira Poly and I'm gonna say use it whatever it comes up with change it to whatever you have okay Madeira Poly use this as my preferred thread and click OK now it has um, changed instead of saying brother embroidery it now says Madeira Poly and here's all the different thread colors that I need to do that embroidery design okay so you can see in here all the different steps 
Now, I like to print it out so that I know how and where it's going to fit on my design and I have my crosshairs for my target sticker. So you just need to go file and print. Okay. I've already printed it out and what it gave me was here's my little gnomes. Okay. That's page one and see it's got crosshairs through here. All right. And I'm going to fold this up. On the, I'm actually going to trim it within a quarter of an inch of the outside of the design all the way around, but I will have my crosshairs so that I can fold it. I need to find that fourth, those, that quadrant, in order to place my target sticker on there. And then page two is a list of all of the threads that I need. And it all came out. So now I'm going to go over to my thread uh, drawers, and I'm going to pull out where it's... And, and the, one of the hard things, too, is these these charts do not print out in the color. See how the coloring looks different? That looks way different than these guys, okay? That looks way different than these guys. Let me find that a bigger, bigger one here. See how cute these are in those little light pastel colors? These don't look the same when they print out but they will stitch out the same. You just have to choose the ones. Now, if you don't have um, the same embroidery thread numbers or something like that, don't worry about that. Pick on here and on your screen, it's gonna tell you what it's fixing to stitch, what part of the gnome, like it's gonna do this hat and that hat and that little thing and that little cell phone and all this. When it stitches that out, it's gonna tell you what it is and you can pick the thread that's going to work. Um, to make, I have done that more than once. Okay, so okay. So I don't want this video to run too long, but I would like you guys who are very beginner machine embroiderers, or you have um, you're you're kind of intimidated with the whole file download thing. I want you to practice that, okay? That's going to be really important, especially if you're going to do the embroider along with us that starts on July 1st. Um, you're going to have to download those files and from from uh, the website where they are, and you're going to need to be able to store them properly on your machine. You're going to be a need to be able to rename them, pull them up transfer them to a USB stick and be able to print out the file some way. If you don't have in Brilliance and you have another um, you have another uh, machine embroidery program, it will do the same thing, okay? But uh, in Brilliance is I think you can get in Brilliance for less than $200. So, that's a deal. Um, and it, it's, it's a pretty pro powerful program. But um, I hope this was helpful to y'all. And um, I am still going to do these little gnomes on that, and I will uh, make this part one, and I will do a part two, probably in a part three, because part two is going to be just embroidering the gnomes, maybe. Part three is going to be putting the whole zipper pouch together, so um, you guys need to go sew something. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.